name is Mark Bates. I'm a consultant here in Boston. Um, I like to help a lot of small companies kind of start and get their MVPs out the door. Um, so they'll come to me with just an idea and we'll kind of work through the business and help them kind of build it from a technical standpoint and launch it and kind of start their dreams, hopefully. Um, I also work with some other more established companies, but my, my heart and soul lies with those kind of people who have that passion and drive um, to, to create their dreams. So that's kind of what I do here uh, during the day. At night, I write books like Programming and Coffee Script and Distributed Programming with Ruby, um, both of which are available anytime for purchase. Um, and occasionally, I form a band and try to make it. So I've got quite a lot of things going on in my life. Programming Coffee Script um, was written for uh, JavaScript developers. Um, so people who already know JavaScript, if you don't know JavaScript, you're going to stumble through the book. Um, so as people who already know JavaScript want to know what CoffeeScript is, um, how it differs from JavaScript, and how they can use it to kind of transform their front-end development. Um, so it's kind of written in two parts. And the first part, we just take a real deep dive into uh, CoffeeScript, the language, and we go through every little nuance of it and every little gotcha and every little magic thing that it does. Um, and then part two, we kind of look at it in practice and we build some sample apps with Node, with Backbone, with jQuery. We look at testing with CoffeeScript. Um, so you really can kind of, you, you learn what it is and then you get to actually play with it and use it in real projects. Um, so by the end of the book, you should be able to say, okay, I know how to use this in my real world applications. Yeah, there are a couple other books on the market. Um, I like to joke that this is the largest book on CoffeeScript, <laughs> um, as it is significantly bigger than all the other CoffeeScript books. So if you're looking for, for quality, quantity um, and value, that's certainly one thing. Um, but no, I think one of the things that really se separates it apart is the fact that not only do we look at the language, but then we and learn all about the language, but then we take it and actually build things with it, and we, we see it in practice. Um, so it's not just kind of pie in the sky thinking. Um, people get to reading the book, actually look at it and say, oh, okay, I was solving that same problem yesterday in Backbone. Wow, it's so much nicer if I use CoffeeScript. So there's a real nice, you know, kind of real world hands-on edge to the book that none of the other books really give you. I would say you definitely need to know JavaScript. That's that's very important. Um, CoffeeScript will make you a better JavaScript developer, and it'll teach you things about JavaScript the language that you didn't know already, um, because it tries to help you with best practices. But if you don't understand the basics of JavaScript and how JavaScript works, the book is going to be difficult for you. And at several points of the book, I tell you, if you don't understand what we're talking about, stop, go read a, a JavaScript book, and come back. You know, wait for you. Um, so I think that's very important: is understanding JavaScript before you get into it. Um, I think it's also important to understand that CoffeeScript isn't a magical language. Um, it won't let you do things that you can't already do in JavaScript. So some people come into it thinking, oh my god, I can get rid of all the crappy things that JavaScript does and never have to worry about it again, and I can do these magical things that I'm used to maybe in, in other languages such as Ruby. Um, but the answer is it can't. It, it kind of abstracts away a lot of that for you and makes it better and easier and you know condenses it down to one line for a lot of stuff. Um, but there's no magic bullet, no silver bullet here. Um, so that's another important thing, I think, to, to take away from, from the book and from CoffeeScript as a language. Uh, I would recommend reading part one, uh, start to finish. Don't, uh, don't really kind of jump through it because you'll miss a lot. And it, each chapter builds on the last chapter. Um, when it comes to part two, we start talking about things like testing with Jasmine or writing node applications or backbone applications. Those are kind of a lot easier to kind of jump around and say, OK, I'm really interested in node. How is CoffeeScript going to help me write better node? Uh, application. So you can kind of jump into that and just, just, just read that individual chapter. The last three chapters are kind of connected together where we build a to-do API server and node, um, then add a front end to it in jQuery, and then replace that front end again with Backbone. Um, but you can still kind of even jump between those chapters if you just want to learn a little bit of Backbone, you're interested in Backbone, and, and what it looks like with CoffeeScript. So you can jump right to that. But definitely read part one first, start to finish, before you jump into any of the parts, part two.